right, so I'm going to make a quick video of how to replace your Harbor Freight cheap winch remote. I have lost a number of these things. It drives me crazy because once you lose them, you're really screwed. <laughs> there is no way to buy a replacement of one of these. Um, in particular, I have a bunch of old ones. And apparently the new ones you can press, you can find the video, you can press the two, these two buttons down and and it will uh, try and reassociate with the, the receiver. But the old ones it doesn't, it doesn't do that. And even still you have to buy, you have to buy a whole new winch to get one of these. And I happen to have quite a few of these old winches. So I wanted to show you how to fix this problem, I mean, you can just buy uh, a whole new receiver setup, a remote receiver that that replaces the receiver that you have, and and, and you hook it up into this, and they're cost about 20 bucks. But the the problem I see with that is that then you need what happens if you lose that receiver. <laughs> so. I think I came up with a, a, another better idea, which is you can buy these transmitters and receivers for seven bucks. Uh, I think this is, says you can get them from mpga.com, and uh, this one says nine dollars, but they're actually six dollars if you go on their website. I think the price went down a little bit from from when I bought this, which was probably a couple years ago. So. Um, these will work with anything. So if you get one of these, they have they have settings. You can set you can set uh, settings in the back here to match the receiver. But if none of these pins are set, if they're all open, then any any transmitter, any any remote will work with any circuit board. They're, they're, I guess that means your neighbor could you can operate your winch if everybody starts using these, but. Um, they don't have a lot of range, so that is highly unlikely. But if you're paranoid about that, you can go in and, and set the settings on these things to, um, to, to specifically mate your remote to the receiver. So, so if you uh, l let's back up and, and, and show you, uh, let me go over here and show you. This is a couple of the winches that I have. These are the these are the boxes, and what's inside this box? You got your motor connection, and then you got your battery connection. And what's inside that box are two things. This is the reversing solenoids, right here. You can see the the power wires come into the middle, and you can see how they're connected to the black and red wires that come off of here. And then the motor, the motor wires are connected to here and here. And this one's missing. This one. But these are the motor wires. See, it says two winch on there. So these are the motor wires. These are the power wires. So you can see this. So you have this, and then you have this box, which is, which is the receiver. For the the that that the remote that the the handheld um, remote talks to, and that so there's these two boxes inside that big box, and what's inside this box, which you can't really open it up, I think it's sealed up, but the, but what you see there, here, is basically here's the receiver for the wireless right here, this little circuit board is the receiver and then it's got two relays so the power comes in on the red you know it hooks just like here it hooks up to these red and blacks like that and then the white and yellow hook up here and they control whether it's going forward or, or backwards whether the motor is forward or reverse so you know I took these apart to see if somehow I could make this remote talk to this receiver. And no, there is no way to do that. 
if you look at this is this is the circuit board that's inside the the remote it's got two of these batteries and the actual re radio wireless part is like right here and there is there is no way to like set any jumpers or anything and same for this one there's just a receiver chip and that's it so I guess I guess there's some numbers that are embedded in these chips unlike this one which has which has these settings in the back jumpers in the back same same for the remote I, I haven't taken it apart but if you will so so what I did is I powered this thing up and I want to replace the radio receiver with this one so if I if you turn it over and I power it up You can see here are the, the two relays. They've got the output and their inputs, and then they've got a signal. They've got a signal that turns them on and off, and that comes from this chip right here. So if you trace these wires, these traces on the board, they go to these transistors, one for each relay. And if you hit, if you um, put five volts on, a, this transistor is going to turn on this relay. So the 12 volts comes in here, and then this is a, a 5 volt regulator right there. Let's see if you know, I'll use something like that. So that is the 5 volt regulator, and that goes into these chips. So it runs the receiver, and then and then uh, when it gets the right button, it turns on. It sends a 5 volts to one of these. So what we're going to do is like. Uh, I should probably just remove this receiver board because none of my remotes will work with this. The ones that I have still don't work with this. So I'm going to take this. This is a receiver for this one, and it's got it's got five volt power that goes into it, and then it's got four different outputs. So whenever you hit A, this one goes high. This one is five volts. You know, B. This one. See, so there's four outputs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect these outputs. Well, first of all, I'm going to I'm going to take the five volt output here and input it to this board, and then I'm going to take the outputs from here to turn on these transistors. So yeah, it's a little tedious, um, but the upside of it is that now you can you can buy as many of these as you want for six bucks. You don't even need this part of it. So I've got two of them right here. So you can uh, buy as many as you want, and you can lose them, and you just get another one. <laughs> so um, that's that's just what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to solder them up, and uh, I'll show you that. Okay, so um, here's my fancy soldering iron, but you don't really need a fancy one. You can buy a you know $10 one or whatever. You can get them at, well, you used to be able to get them at Radio Shack, but you can get them at anywhere online so what I did is I removed the receiver board and these two chips basically these two chips because I want to get to this solder so there it is are these two soldering pads from that chip it was on here and those go to these transistors here so I want to solder two wires on one on each pad and what I did is I got these jumper wires and I cut them and then I have the the, the copper leads and I'm going to solder those copper leads onto here and then we're going to solder it on to this pad Then we, we need the 5 volt too. So then I want the 5 volts. And 5 volts is coming out right here. Well, it comes out right at this pin, but it's also right here. And this is going to be a much easier place to attach the wire. So, oops. 
got first we gotta gotta tin the wire. to the spot. There we go. Then we need the ground. And we can just solder the ground right onto there. Can't power this with 12 volts. Need five volts. throw these things away because I have no receiver that works with that. And now we can plug the ground where it says G and D are ground. And then we want the 5 volts plugged into here. Consistent, and then we've got D zero, which I assume is A, <laughs> and D three, which I assume is D. All right, so there we go. So let's power this thing up with 12 volts. There's our negative. Now. Okay, did you hear that? You can hear. You can hear the relay. I've got fans going and air conditioning. But so B and C. That's good enough. I was gonna make both A and B B in and C and D out, but we'll just go with that separates them out. In fact, I could, I could just take, we could open this up and take these A and D buttons out. Let's unscrew this and show you what's inside. This thing actually runs on 12 volts. It's got a 12 volt battery, which is a big battery compared to uh, the little batteries that are on this thing. It's all one piece. I'd say we're just going to leave it. But you really could if you wanted to. I, I just don't think you need to. So here, here, these are the these are the jumpers in the back. So you can match the transmitter with the receiver. And there's nothing. There's no settings. So anything will work. All right, we're just going to call it good enough. I'm going to hot glue these wires on because they are very fragilely soldered. And if you if you uh, if you mess with them too much, they won't come off. You don't want them to short. That one's that one is good. I don't really need to do that one. But these two in particular. So hot glue is great for doing that. It's awesome. Yeah, I've got my. This is my 
my uh, remote that I hacked in to the Harbor Freight. So now I can use any of these. They're all any. If I lose my remote, like I've lost them three times, now uh, now I can just use this, just get one of these six bucks. All right, let's see it work. It's really loud, so. I'll warn you, we're going down. <laughs> 